Hello there, this is Joseph, and welcome to your sixth tutorial on QML GUI programming. Uh, the last tutorial, we didn't learn that much. We just learned how to create a new project and how to move around in it. And in this tutorial, we're actually going to be doing some coding. Um, we're going to pick uh, Qt Quick 2 UI, press Choose. We're going to call this one Rectangles because we're primarily going to be dealing with rectangles. Press Next, uh, add no version control, and press our Finish button and we are set up with our application that we are used to. We press the play button just to look at it, and we create the application. There we go. So here we go, here's a rectangle right here. If we hover over it, and we wait a couple seconds, you see this dialog comes up, and uh, it says, you know, press F1 for help. We can press F1, and here we go. Here's all the help that we can get. We can go through each one and look at each uh, element, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm sorry, property within the element. So. Let's uh, take a look, little look at this rectangle right here. Say we wanted to add some color to this rectangle. We could just type in color, and we could type, oops. And this is probably pretty important right now. Every time that we want to add a property, okay, we add the name of the property, okay, and then we add this little do dot, two dot here. Okay, I don't know the real name for it, but if somebody wants to post below, that'd be helpful. Thank you very much. We then add, uh, add our... Uh, things here and we <laughs> I'm drawing a blank here today uh, and uh, we add our color and for the sanctity of simplicity I'm just going to type in red press uh, control s to save it and control r to run it and you can see the whole background is red now say I wanted to add another rectangle okay but there's something that I should talk about first every single element has a starting curly bracket and an ending curly bracket but why is this text one right here and then the ending one is right there? That's because we need to have a base element, okay? And our base element is the topmost element called rectangle in this one, okay? So the reason why it's down here, okay, is because it has to encompass the whole entire page. We'll get way more into that later on with childs and parents, and we'll be discussing parents here in just a couple seconds. But say we wanted to add another rectangle. What we can do is we can press the R button, the capital R, shift and R, and we can press control, okay, and then the space bar, and it will bring up the IntelliSense, okay? And it will show us each element that we can add onto here, and we're adding rectangle. So once we're highlighted on that area, we can press the tab button. Let's go over that again. Capital R, control space bar, go to the one that we want to use, rectangle, press the tab button, there we go. And like I said before, all elements must have curly brackets around them. So let's add some curly brackets around this one and uh, add some space here. So here we go. Now let's uh, look at some of the uh, properties. There's one called ID, which is really important and a lot of people use it. And it just basically sets an ID to the element that you're using. So in this case, we're going to type in blue rec because we're going to be making this rectangle blue. And you obviously know the next step is going to be the color and it's going to be blue. Okay. Now let's set the width of it to be, I don't know, say 64 pixels wide and the height of it to be say 64 pixels wide. Also we save and run this code and there's our blue rectangle, but it, it's kind of out of place and blah, blah, blah. We kind of want it behind the hello world thing here, okay? So we press the uh, X button right here to close the application. Now to do this, we could use something like X properties. We could say X is equal to 64 pixels over and Y is 64 pixels over also too. And we run the code and you can see that it moves it over there, but it's not centered in kind of like how the other one is. Well, to center something in, we can use what's called anchors, okay? And we just type in anchors dot center in. And we're going to use our parent. What's our parent? So let's just type in parent there. If we press the control button and hold it down and hover over where it says parent, you can see it turns to green and there's a little hand button. If we left click now, it'll bring us directly to our parent right here. But for simplicity, let's try this a little bit differently. Let's set an ID to this one called root tangle, okay, because it's our root rectangle. Now let's center this in to our root tangle, okay? Let's 
press the uh, control, let's save it, and let's run it. And you can see it is now centered in. But the width and height aren't really that well, so we need to make them bigger. Okay, now we could just sit there and we could say, you know, 120 pixels on the width and 64 on the length. And we could take a look at that and run it and say, hey, that's kind of nice, you know. But what happens when we scale? It doesn't really move with it all that well, you know. Um, so something that we can do to get around that is we can say root tangle dot width and we'll divide it by two. Okay, so the whole entire width of root tangle, okay, divided by two. And we're centered in right here. And the height is 64 pixels. And when we move this around now, it should scale with it at all points. See how the blue is scaling right there? It's very nice. Okay, so we learned about that. Let's learn about some more properties. We can learn about borders real quick. Say border dot, oops, border dot color. And we're gonna set this to black. And another way that we can set to black instead of just typing in black like that, we can also put the HTML notations in, which are six zeros for black. We can press the pound scene and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And there we go. Now let's run this. And we can see that there's a very small outline of black around our hello world. And what we can do is we can set the border width, border dot, oops, dot width. And we could set that to say, I don't know, seven pixels. We run it and there we go. We can also set the radius, okay, of our rectangle to say, I don't know, 20% round. Control shift run and there we go. Now it's looking like we're starting to have a button here. Well, that's fun, buttons are fun. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Okay, so let's lay, take a look at our color before that we had here. We have the color of blue. We can also use the property called opacity, okay? And set that to say, I don't know, 0 0.44, okay? Opacity works on a scale of 0, 0.0 being, or I should say just 0 being absolutely no opacity. It's not gonna be there. So when we run this, we don't even see the rectangle. If we put it at one, that's our maximum amount, okay? So now if we run this, okay, the opacity is gonna be all the way set all the way up. But if we want it, say, like halfway, we could type in dot, okay, 50, because that's 50% of in between 0 and 1. So it goes from the smallest numbers to the largest numbers. Now we run this, and you can see that it's matching in with the red background with the blue and making it into a purple. Pretty cool. Okay. So what we can also do is say we wanted to make our rectangle white. We could simply do that, but we can also use the HTML notations, as we know, which is uh, six Fs, one, two, three, four, five, six, and let's run this. And here we go, we now have a white background here, okay? We can also add opacity into our string of our color by just simply at the beginning of the HTML notation, adding a number in between zero and 100, in which we want to, well, actually double zeros in 99 in which we want to use for our opacity and for this case we're going to add in 50 so it's 50 percent opacity now when we run this you can see that it actually shades the red so it's not working with the purple anymore okay it's the white shading against the red because it's not blue too also right so that's a little bit about rectangles let's talk more about the help section Again, we know that if we hover over it and wait a couple seconds, then we can press the F1 button. But what if we don't want to wait? We can actually just select it and then press the F1 button and it shows up right away. The only one we didn't really cover was gradient and we'll take a real quick look at that right here. It says the, it will, uh, gradient is used to fill the rectangle. This property allows for construction of simple uh, vertical gradients. Other gradients may be formatted in the rotation to the rectangle, okay? Well, let's take and copy this little snippet of gradient that they already have for us in the help page here, and let's add it in right here. Now let's just comment this code out, okay? Our color, let's comment that out by simply pressing control forward slash, okay? And it puts our two forward slashes in the front, notating that it's commented out. Now what's a comment? A comment could just be something as simple as, say, set the height, to 64 
pixels and I spelt it wrong so that means it's perfect and now we run it and now we have this gradient right here we can also set the rotation of the gradient okay um, I don't know a simple a simple rotation would suffice and we'll oops rotation we'll set it to be uh, 180 degrees and run it so it flipped it upside down and now the light is on the bottom the dark is on the top set that back to and we can just comment this out and run it again and you can see that the lights back on the top and there we go on the bottom well we learned a bunch about rectangles in this tutorial next we'll be covering text I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, look forward to your comments or anything underneath here and uh, have a good day